this time, an Apollo 11 photo signed by the entire crew. If you had three authentic signatures, it could be up to around $15,000. Oh, my God. Hey, Walt. I meet a paper boy turned astronaut who made headlines in his hometown. I delivered that paper for three and a half years. That's unbelievable. And I cash in on a cosmonaut spacesuit. You got a deal, Larry. That's that's really something. I love these. I have to have them. Oh, this is good stuff. What's so good about it? It's all junk. These are absolutely Crazy, amazing. right? But there's a problem. What are you talking about? There's a fortune to be made in space junk. But to make big bucks, you got to take big risks. And show you've got the right stuff. This is the map of Apollo 17. Good morning to everyone in television land. Get out of the way, Grandma. Name your price. I'm Larry. I love them. Don't stub your toe. I've been doing this for 30 years, and I'm the best there is. I really need to buy this from you. I'm Tori. I worked at NASA, so I have an eye for things that other dealers miss. Apollo service module engine? Yeah. What's the price on this? 1.5 mil. I'm cold. I have the best contacts in the business, so there's nothing I can't find. $155,000. $25,000. How about three? The space race is back on. stranger than the infinite vastness of space, it's the people who are into it. Exhibit one, the wonderful Sidecar Willie. Hey, Willie, you home? Hey, Tori, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, bud. How are you? Excellent, excellent. Good. Sidecar Willie lives in the woods in a world of his own, surrounded by his crazy creations. This is incredible. What is this? Well, it's a tensional system that uh, I've been experimenting with. I can get it to mimic the harmonic of the human cavity. Really? That vibrates at 7.8 hertz. I can actually mimic that. I can make this vibrate at 7.8 hertz all by itself. It's a wonderful thing. And so what could we use this for? Well, I haven't got to that yet. Oh, I see. I don't know what I'll use it for. I didn't even know if this was possible. Yeah. But as well as the contraptions, Willie picks up quite a bit of space memorabilia, and he's always willing to trade. I have a pack of seeds that uh, supposedly went up on the shuttle. I don't know anything about them. Wow, I have never seen them, but I've read about them. If humans are ever to colonize distant worlds, they're gonna need to feed themselves. <laughs> and that means carrying seeds into space. In 1984, 12 and a half million tomato seeds were left orbiting Earth to test the effect on them of long exposure to space radiation. Probably the first in a long line of experiments with the tomatoes. Six years later, the Space Shuttle Columbia brought the seeds back, and they were given to school children who grew them into perfectly healthy plants. But Sidecar Willie's packet was never opened, which makes it rare. I love these. I have to have them. How much do you want? Oh, I, I really can't, uh, Tori. I, I've already promised them to a man in California. I'm supposed to be shipping them out tomorrow, but... Uh, You're kidding me. You know, I, Why'd you show me then? Just to tease uh, you, me? Space seeds are like something out of a sci-fi movie and the kind of quirky item that sells really well. What makes me the greatest space dealer in this great country of ours? Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Knowing everyone knowing everything and being first in line when the new stuff hits the market. Man, this suit's great. There's a Russian cosmonaut space suit owned by a guy I know down in Florida who wants to sell. But there's a problem. I promised my beloved and tyrannical wife that I wouldn't buy so much as a science museum pen without selling a ton of stuff. She says I'm turning into a hoarder. I know what I gotta do. I'm in Houston, Texas to have some kit from the Apollo program verified. In this game, provenance is everything. So I've come to meet an old friend, Apollo 7 astronaut Walt Cunningham. If Walt authenticates it, the price will rocket. Hey, Cole. Hey, Walt. How are you? Welcome. Oh, come on in. Come on in. Walt's an all-American hero who piloted 54 night fighter attack missions in Korea and flew on Apollo 7 
which took special bravery because it was the first manned NASA launch following the deaths of his astronaut buddies in the tragic Apollo 1 launch pad fire. It's great to see you back again. You don't get here that often. No, I don't, I don't. And you know why I'm here. I came with this piece I wanted to show you. Well, I'll see what I can do. My wife, Patty, is the person I love and fear above all others, but mainly fear. I am desperate to buy a cosmonaut spacesuit, but I am under a total buying ban until I unload a bunch of stuff that my wife heartlessly refers to as junk. This medical kit, oh man, I remember that's from Gemini. A medical kit from NASA's second human spaceflight program. Who in their right mind would want to sell something like this? This is from actually the Apollo Kynes computer. So this stuff is great. Larry, what is that thing? Oh, it's my wife. Come to give me some advice. So what are you doing? Well, I'm just looking through some of this stuff. This stuff? Just, oh, come on. No, this is good stuff. What's so good about it? It's all junk. One man's junk is another man's treasure. Well, this let, is my treasure. Let another man treasure it then. Get rid of it. It's all stuff that's flown in space. It's a pen. Yeah, but that's a pen from Skylab. It's a pen. Yeah, but it flew. So what? I can toss it again and it'll fly again. My wife's heart is harder than kryptonite. You're a dealer. This is your job. Move it. You need the money. Mm. As soon as my competitors hear that there's a cosmonaut spacesuit on sale, it'll go in a flash. I need to sell some stuff super fast. Oh, you made the front page. The evening outlook. Perfect Apollo flight ends. What I liked about it is I delivered that paper for three and a half years from the time I was 11 years old. So I thought that was a real accomplishment. <laughs> That's after. unbelievable. <laughs> Walt's hometown newspaper proudly tells the story of this Iowa paper boy turned physicist, turned marine, turned astronaut. Walt was a lunar module pilot on Apollo 7, putting what was then the most high-tech spaceship to its paces and making the first Apollo rendezvous in space when the command module met up with its own separated third stage rocket. It's like you're looking at a four-jawed angry alligator. NASA hailed Walt's mission 101% successful. Walt's front page tells that story, and his personal history as a delivery boy for this newspaper makes it highly collectible. I'm already getting sidetracked. I think I want to buy this piece. No, no, you can't have it. All it's right. the only one I got. All right, I won't take this, but I'm going to take a walk around and see what else you got here. OK, that's fair. <laughs> I struck out on Willie Space Seeds, but I know they're not the only thing he's got for sale. I have a photograph here. This is from Apollo 11. It is signed. Wow. It appears to be the real deal. Wow, so Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, different pens. It's an excellent shape. It is. I feel like I just struck oil. A signed Apollo 11 photograph is highly collectible, but one with all three astronaut signatures, it's worth a small fortune. The autographs are excellent. Wow, oh my God, this is awesome. When Neil Armstrong took man's first steps on the moon, he instantly became a worldwide celebrity. But he was uncomfortable in his new role and eventually stopped signing photos. It was estimated in the 1990s that Armstrong could make two million bucks in a single day if he'd just sit down and sign a heap of autographs. But he wouldn't do it. Armstrong's signature is precious enough. But the other two Apollo 11 spacemen, Mike Collins and Buzz Aldrin, have also signed it. So this is super special, if it's genuine. There's no paperwork with it. No, there isn't. No. Authenticity, right? No, you know as much about it as I do right there. Buying anything without its history is risky business. But sometimes you just have to follow your instincts. Mine are telling me this is the real deal. How much do you want? Well, Tori, that's a, a really pristine piece. 10,000 would uh, certainly. Oh, 10,000 bucks? 
That's a big asking price. I think I'd be willing to go 5000 on it. I would be uh, cutting my own throat with that because there are other collectors out there that will pay that. I'll go 7500 That's it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold out for the 10000 Oh, man. All right, 10,000. Killing me, you know that. Good news is, I have what I believe is a genuine signed Apollo 11 photo. Bad news is, I can't be sure it's the real thing. Now I just need to get it verified. Walt's office is like Treasure Island to a dealer like me. And instead of getting my Apollo kit verified, I keep getting distracted by super rare space pieces. Pieces like his Emmy Award. Why did you, an astronaut, fighter pilot, get an Emmy? All three of us got a, an Emmy like that because we had the first live television from space. Apollo 7's live broadcasts were affectionately dubbed the Walt, Wally, and Don Show. Roger, good morning to everyone in television land. For the first time ever, millions of Americans watched their space heroes float, eat, work, and play live in the microgravity of space. The huge impact of those broadcasts landed Walt with this Emmy. There's no way he'll sell it, but I can't resist asking. So I'm buying it. <laughs> Good luck. It's not for sale. Are you kidding? I've had this thing now for 38 years. What makes you think I would ever <laughs> sell an Emmy to you? So I tell you what, Walt, if you get a second Emmy, I'll be back to buy this one. <laughs> it says survival kit on it. I don't know where you got this. It's, you know, it looks like it's still in good shape. Larry, hi. What is this? That is a really neat piece. A Buzz Aldrin autograph is probably somewhere around $400. Altogether on one photo, what would they be worth? Well, the whole is worth more than the sum of its parts. I'm in Houston visiting Apollo 7's Walt Cunningham. Like all astronauts, he's reluctant to sell, but that's really not why I'm here. Astronauts are a crucial part of the business because they can verify the things we buy elsewhere. Things like my Apollo Pilot Flight Training Survival Kit. So I got this piece from a dealer who tells me it was from the 1960s and that the astronauts used this. It says survival kit on it. Well, what would be in it? It's got all that neat stuff still in it, chocolate bar. I'm sure it's still got the morphine capsules and <laughs> all that other good stuff they used to do to keep you alive. In the 1960s, NASA issued survival kits to trainee astronauts in case they had to eject from their training aircraft. The T-38 nicknamed the White Rocket, had supersonic twin jet engines. Capable of speeds of up to Mach 1.6, T-38s can fly at over 40,000 feet, pulling seven Gs. No wonder they need survival kits. And because the kits all look the same, astronauts took to marking them so they knew which one was theirs. Hang on, let me take a look here. As a matter of fact, look at that. This was my survival kit for my uh, No way. Yeah, it, it, That's it was. That's yours. Is he kidding me? Yeah. How do you know that? Well, it's got the marks I put on it. <laughs> Three little yeah. cuts. Yeah, I don't know where you got this. You know, it looks like it's still in good shape. You want me to sign this for you? Absolutely. I, of course I want you to sign it for me. I've got a pen right here. Beautiful. Now I've got Providence. I know that this is yours. I love it. It's not mine, it's yours. It's mine now. <laughs> Walt's signature and verification just added another zero to the value of this thing. Bless you, Walt. I'm in Florida to buy a Russian spacesuit, but the problem is I'm under oath from the all knowing, all seeing Supreme Being, also known as my wife. She says I can't buy until I sell, which I have to anyway, to buy the suit. Hi, Larry, hi. Bruce, how are you doing? Doing good, thank good you. you. I've been selling to Bruce for years, and I'm sure he'll take something off my hands. 
I was going to say we go inside, but what is all this good stuff doing out here in the garage? Well, my collection's sort of overwhelming the house, and my wife says you got to do something about it, so I'm starting to move stuff out here. What is this? That is a really neat piece. This is a lunar soil penetrometer probe. They wanted to find out a little bit more about the surface, so they had this probe on the end of a rod, and they would measure how far in it went. Turns out the moon was not made of cheese. Under its thick layer of abrasive dust, there's a solid, rocky crust 40 miles deep. From 1969 to 1972, six missions collected 2,200 samples, and these allowed scientists to work out how the moon was formed. I'm gonna get this thing out now that I got it. The tools used to collect the moon samples are worth a fortune. This simple shovel has been valued at $300,000, and Bruce's penetrometer plate flew on Apollo 16. I want it. So this was not only on the moon, it was in the moon, about two inches into the surface of the moon. Patty says, sell, 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 but I'm thinking, buy, buy, buy. I'll, I'll be back for this later. I'm in New York State to have my Apollo 11 photograph authenticated. Hey, Tori, how are you doing? I'm doing guilty. How are you? Good. Come on in. Thanks. Steve Zarelli is the East Coast go-to guy for autographs. Verification from Steve is respected throughout the trade. If he says it's kosher, then it's the real McCoy. And I've got 10K riding on this. I'm sure you recognize. Oh, Buzz Aldrin, I sure do. And there's the first human to walk on the moon. Yep, there's the man, Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. Apollo 11's astronauts were among the best known celebrities of the late 1960s. They spent months on a NASA world tour full of ticker tape parades, meeting presidents, prime ministers, the Queen of England, and even the Pope. In the early days of their fame, they all signed a heck of a lot of photographs. So what makes one autograph more valuable than another autograph? Well, like a lot of other things, it's supply and demand. Buzz Aldrin and Mike Collins, they're still alive, and they sign commercially through private companies. You can send something in and get it signed for a fee. Right. Neil Armstrong never participated in private signings of that nature. Gotcha. So these autographs individually, how much are they worth? Well, on today's market, you're looking at a Buzz Aldrin autograph is probably somewhere around $400. Okay. Altogether on one photo, what would they be worth? Well, the whole is worth more than the sum of its parts. Now we're talking. If you had three authentic signatures on one item, you're talking it could be up to around $15,000. 15K? That's more like it. $5,000 profit? Not a bad day's work. I have to have that Russian spacesuit. Luckily, I have pieces that collectors like Bruce go crazy for. I happen to have. Deke Slayton's T-33 kneeboard that he used when he was learning to fly in the Air Force. The Deke Slayton. The Deke Slayton. And it's even got his name on it and a place where you could put a pencil. And it just gave all the documents he needed while he was flying. That was strap on his knee. Right on his knee, exactly where you just put it. In 1959, military pilot Deke Slayton began training as a Mercury 7 astronaut but he didn't get to fly because he had a heart problem. Instead, Slayton became one of the most powerful administrators in the space program. But in the 1970s, Deke got healthy and passed a physical to join the Apollo Soyuz test project as an astronaut. It is said that he celebrated his good news by taking a T-38 jet up for a spin. And maybe, just maybe, he took my kneeboard. This is real history. And I'd love to have it, but I promised my wife I wouldn't buy anything for a while. Is this some sort of wipe conspiracy? Although it is small, she might not notice it. Mm. What, what do you want for it? I spent a pretty penny on this, so I kind of need 5,000 bucks. Oh, I don't think I can do that. I just can't do it. Well, what are you thinking? How about 1800 1800 Is he kidding me? I'll tell you what, I'll knock it down to uh, 
3,500. I just can't do it. She'd kill me. Because it's you. 2,500 bucks and it's yours. <sighs> I think I could do it. Congratulations, Bruce. Excellent. I love it. Thank you. I'll wire you the money. Oh, yeah, I trust you. Okay. That's a start, but I can't go back to Patty minus a kneeboard plus a spacesuit. I gotta move some stuff and fast. I paid $10,000 for a signed Apollo 11 crew photo. And Steve says it could be worth up to 15000 as long as it's the real thing. Now it's the moment of truth. Check this out. All right. The crew of Apollo 11, the first lunar landing. Yes. So I noticed when I was buying it that the pens are different colors. Mm -hmm. uh, the thickness of the ink is different. So that, that convinced me somewhat that this was the stuff. Well, let's take a closer look uh, at it. Yes, please do. That's real ink on paper. It's not pre-printed. That does look like the signature of Neil Armstrong, Mike Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. But there's a problem. What are you talking about? Oh, what the, who the hell's this? Oh, man, it's David. Hello. The guy who's selling the spacesuit, and he's giving me the hurry up. No, no, don't sell the suit. I'll take care of you, just give me a little time. I gotta sell to placate Patty and raise some cash. Otherwise, that suit's gonna be sold to my enemies. This was signed, but not by someone's hand. Is it forgery? Not really. This was signed by a machine called an auto pen that NASA used to sign photographs to meet the demand of the many thousands of requests they were getting. So that's not their signatures? It's a machine replicated copy of what their signature looks like. I can't believe I'm hearing this. Just look at the natural flow, the looseness, the bounce in that signature compared to that one. Stiff, mechanical looking, whereas that, very natural looking. So how much do you think this is worth? On the collector's market, it's probably worth about $25. Ten thousand bucks. Gone. Well, I appreciate your time. My pleasure. Sorry I couldn't have better news for yeah, you. Yeah, me too. This is a disaster. I was sure I had a winner. Now I'm ten thousand dollars down. Usually my intuition is right on the money. This time I missed. Oh, that's a lot of damn money. This is the single biggest loss I've made in this game. Boy, does it hurt. Great, who's this now? That's all I need. Oh, great. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Well, uh, I was out looking at some stuff today, and I came across something that has your name written all over it. Really? What's that? Absolutely. It is a pair of Apollo 1 prototype boots that are signed by Walter Cunningham. I dream of rare pieces like this, and it arrives just as I hit rock bottom. Um, here's the problem, though. I just, I just did a bad deal, and uh, I just don't have the cash. All right, well, that's disappointing. If anything changes, Tori, you go right on ahead and you let me know. All right, thanks again. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. This deal has cost me a lot, and I need to come up with a plan, quick. Get out of the way, Grandma. That pen is certified as flown. I have the opportunity to purchase something. That's pretty rare. If we don't take this deal, somebody else is going to. I want in, Tori, I want in. I have first refusal on a rare Russian spacesuit. The trouble is, the seller is only willing to hold it for me today. I am racing to fulfill a promise and raise some cash. Get out of the way, Grandma. I have a lead on a client who might want to buy my Skylab 3 pen. 
Larry. Hey. I gotta do this deal fast or I'm gonna lose that spacesuit on hold for me. If Chuck says he wants to buy, he's usually reliable, so here goes. Can't wait to see this. Oh, yeah. This is a pen from Ed Gibson. He flew it on Skylab. You can still see the Velcro on it. Oh, yeah, and it's got the NASA numbers on it. Yeah, this is Skylab 3, and I checked the numbers. That pen is certified as flown not only by Ed, but by the manifest that NASA put out. That's fantastic. No, isn't it? This is no ordinary pen. In the mid-1970s, Ed Gibson spent a then record-breaking 84 days aboard Skylab. He used a Fisher space pen on the mission with special ink cartridges engineered to work in microgravity. There's a space race myth that NASA spent millions of dollars developing the pen, but that just ain't so. The company owner, Paul Fisher, invented it and charged NASA just $6 per pen, which the Soviets bought too. The pens were good enough for the two greatest superpowers in space. And for the right money, Chuck can own Ed Gibson's original. $3,000 is a reasonable price. Um, I don't know, would you do 2,000 on it? Uh, I can make do with 2,500. But I need to move fast on this, you know really what? fast. You know what, $2,500, you split the difference. All I'm right. good with we that. We got a deal, can you get me the cash? Uh, you need the dough, I will get it from my safe. Excellent. Not a problem. Okay, I promised my wife I'd sell, and I've sold two very nice items and raised five grand. Now I feel morally and commercially justified in buying that Russian spacesuit if I can only get it in time and at the right price. The machine made Apollo 11 signatures cost me 10 grand. I'm willing to go to any length to recoup some of my losses. Tori? Tori, what's up? How are you? Hello, Cole, how are you? Why am I calling the competition? Because I have a plan and it involves those signed Apollo prototype boots. The seller wants 12K, but I know they're worth a lot more. This is how I'm gonna make some of my money back. I have the opportunity to purchase something that's very rare, and I thought perhaps you'd like to join me in this proposition. This does not smell right. Tori would only come to me if she was desperate. All right, uh, I'm listening, what do you got? I have uh, the opportunity to purchase the Apollo 1 prototype boots. You gotta be kidding me. Nope. Apollo 1 prototype boots? Now she has my full attention. All right, all right, keep talking. I, I, want, I want to know more. They, they're asking $12,000 for them. You know what? You know what? Send me some photographs first. Okay, I'm sending them right now. Hold on. All right, standing by. All right, here they come. No way. Yeah, these are incredible. Look at these things, they're pristine. Yep. I, I want in, Tori, I want in. Great, he loves them. Now for the hard part. Well, Cole, here's my problem. I really don't have my half. So what I was kind of hoping was... Maybe you could finance them and consider half the profit for me as like a finder's fee. So you want me to put up all, you want me to put up all the money? Yeah. I put up the whole purchase price for just half the profit? What planet is she on? I'm the one taking all the financial risk here. If we don't take this deal, somebody else is going to. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. But still 50-50, Tori. I, I... I'm still not sold on that deal. I know Tori already has a buyer for these boots but I also have a collector who would bite my hands off for them. The problem is, the deal is still too risky for me. How about if your collector pays more, you get the whole profit. If my collector pays more, we split it 50-50. Now you're talking. This is my final play. Yes, Cole is fronting all the cash, but I'm dangling one big carrot. 
that seems like, like a fair deal. All right, I'll go ahead and I'll send you the information for the seller. Perfect, that sounds great. Thanks, have a good day. Thanks, you too, Cole, bye-bye. You know what? This day might turn out all right after all. I finally made it to David's. I just hope he still has something large, Russian, and inflatable hanging in his closet. Hey, I'm gonna sell you a suit today. Oh, man. I told you I was gonna make it. Look Here at this thing. Here we have it, the so-called KV-2, and it's Russian, and you know you want it. It's gorgeous. Oh, I love these gloves, too. Supple, you know. these oh, are still supple. Worn during launches, dockings, and descents, the Sokol suit inflates into a bubble to protect cosmonauts against decompression. The suit was introduced in 1973 after three cosmonauts who were not wearing protective suits froze and suffocated on board a Soyuz when their capsule sprang a leak, exposing them to the freezing vacuum of space. American astronaut Shannon Lucid wore her Sokol during her six-month mission to the Russian Mir space station. It's in good shape, and it seems to have all of its accessories. I'm looking at even a mirror. I'm not even sure what that is. Oh, this mirror is amazing, actually. It's yeah. so that the astronaut, in this case, Shannon Lucid, can take a look at herself, check out, and make sure that there's nothing going on wrong with the helmet. I'm 100% certain that this is Shannon Lucid's flown spacesuit. But I also know that David doesn't have the paperwork to prove it. And when I sense a weakness, I go in for the kill. Hey, David, you know what this is all about. Without any paperwork, I can't tell if it flew or not. That devalues the whole thing right from there. Look at it. I mean, it just looks like it's flown. It's perfect. And they had training suits, too. Tell me. What's your initial price? You know, it's got to be $30,000. Ouch! That's double what I have in my wallet right now. Hey, Tori. Hey, Cole. I got him. Oh, my God. How great. I didn't even open the box. I feel like a kid at Christmas. I cannot wait to get eyes on these boots. I waited for you. I don't know if I can do it. You got the honors. Open oh, them up. Jeez. OK. Oh my, oh my God. God. Look at these. Oh my God. These boots are absolutely incredible. It hurts to admit it, but Tori's done good. Oh man. Okay, I don't even want to touch it. I don't either. I think we should be wearing gloves. I think so. These are perfect. Oh my God. Look at this. You no, know, they kind of feel like moccasins. They're even signed by my old mate, Walt. Apollo boots from my personal collection, Walt Cunningham. So these were his. Apollo's Walt Cunningham and Roger Chaffee teamed up with a Houston tailor to design an astronaut outfit made of soft kid goat leather. But after the Apollo 1 launch pad fire, NASA decreed astronaut clothing had to be non-flammable. So the leather outfit never got beyond the prototype. The boots are all that remain of the suit. So they're truly a unique piece of Apollo history. So Tori, how can we make this fair? Well, you know, I've done this with other dealers. We did like a sealed bid kind of thing. Sealed envelopes, each of our guys gives a bid. We don't see it, we don't know it. And then we come back here and we open it up. Whoever has the highest one wins. We'll come back, open them here together. Right. If it goes my way, I get my money back and all the profit. I say if. But what I mean is when. Deal. Deal. Perfect. You got it. Thanks, Tori. Okay, thank you. David's playing tough, but I don't play. I am tough. Okay, I'm not gonna buy it for 30. I'll give you 10 for it. I, I couldn't let it go for less than 20. Max I'm gonna go on this is 12 grand. 13. All right, you got a deal. All right, Larry, you reluctantly, Ruthless Larry, have a deal. Ruthless, huh? He hasn't met my wife. I've spent $8,000 more than I earned today. To keep her from going off like a rocket, I gotta sell this suit. Hey, Harv, how you doing? 
Did you get my email and those pictures? Holy crap. These are absolutely Crazy, amazing. Right? All right, let's make this happen. Holy moly. Oh, that's nice. Wish me luck. Wish us both luck. I'm at John's house in Boca Raton. He's got a passion for Apollo items. Hey, hey Tori. How are you? Good. Come on in. Good to see you. Uh, you remember Scout? He's my best bet for a high seal bid on those Apollo boots. I'm excited to see what you brought. You ready? I'm ready. All righty, here we go. Apollo 1 wow. prototype boot. Holy moly. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, I really like this. So, do you have the other one? I don't have it with me, but I have a picture of the other one. Okay. Which is signed by Walt Cunningham. Wow. There you go. Wow. And for my personal one. Very nice. Hey, Lara. Fantastic, you're here. Tell me these are the boots. I rushed to get here. These, these, are, the, these are the boots. Let's go, let's go. Lara is one of my best buyers. She never lets me down. Crazy, wow. right? Wow. These are absolutely Crazy, amazing. Right? Prototype Apollo IPC boots. I mean, they're, oh, they're so soft. Amazing, right? Oh, they're incredible. This is a done deal, baby. You don't find stuff from Apollo 1, Lara. I mean, you don't. For cool. Things don't come up. <laughs> Where's the other boot? There's only one boot in here. Yeah, well, okay, here's a little bit, little bit of a problem. Time to come clean. Problem with this is I didn't find these. Okay. I bought them, I paid for them, but another dealer actually found these boots. I have this thing going on with another dealer. Uh, he has someone else who's interested in the same item. We're doing, we're doing a sealed bid kind of deal and... Um, okay. Whoever makes the highest bid wins the item. So I need to write you a good bid. You need to write the okay. best bid you can write. Okay. Well, let's do that. You are going to write down your highest bid for these boots. The maximum you want to pay for them. Okay. And then add a little bit more. Add 10% more. Because you know what? These are incredible. They're not going to come up again. You want these boots. Okay. They want these boots. All right, so. I'm going to write down my highest price, and we're going to get these boots. All right, okay. I'm going to turn them away. Okay. You write down your okay. highest price. Don't go low, Lara. You got to go high, because I, I know these people, I know they're going to go high. OK. You're not looking now, are you? I am not. I'm admiring your wall. This is going to do it. And seal it up. All right. All right, call. All right. Let's make this happen, OK? Here Best you go. Winning number. Wish me luck. Wish us both luck. I have to have the winning bid. If not, I'm right back where I started, 10K down. If the number's right, I'm going to come back after I meet with this dealer tonight with two boots for you. Buy one. Get one free. <laughs> OK, Cole. <laughs> All right, let's make this happen. Call me tonight. Talk to you tonight. Don't make me wait too long, OK? I'm nervous. Hey, Harv, how you doing? I'm doing well, Larry. How are you? Good. Harv knows his Soviet space gear from A to Z and back again, and I've sent him pictures of Shannon Lucid's Russian Sokol spacesuit. Did you get my email on those pictures? I was pretty surprised. That is a, uh, that's a spectacular find, Larry. Really? Really. If anyone can verify that this spacesuit has flown without the paperwork, Harv can. So what's the verdict? How spectacular. I, uh, that is a flown suit. Holy crap. Harv has verified the suit, but now will Harv buy the suit?
I'm doing business in the diner, and that fits, because Tori's bid is toast. Hey, hey, Tori. How you doing, Cole? Good to see you. You too. Moment of truth? Moment of truth. Let's do this. She's looking pretty sure of herself, but what she doesn't know is I have a client like Lara who would kill for these boots. I know this envelope has the higher bid. You think? I know so. I can tell you, my guy looked at this, he examined it all over, tested everything, made sure everything was good, and then made a spot for it on his shelves. So I think my guy's got it. I may be acting confident, but inside I am scared out of my mind. If Cole's bid is higher than mine, I'm still out 10K, and I've wasted an entire day on a space boot beauty contest. Well, we're gonna find out, aren't we? We are, right now. So I can either get all the profit. Or half. Or half. I don't lose. No, you don't. But you might. You first. All right. Moment of truth. I'd like to maybe uh, offer you maybe in the area of about 30. Straight in for more than double what I paid for it. And that's just for openers. Flown spacesuits are like gold dust for collectors. I, I got to get more than that. I'm thinking, because it's you, uh, I'll uh, cut some money off this thing and go in at 40000 What do you think? A lot more than I wanted to spend. How about uh, 33 I'm going to go at uh, thirty-five grand, and that's the lowest I'm going to go. You're going to have to take it, or I'll, I'll move it at an auction and take my chances. Thirty-five. Um, you got a deal, Larry. That's, that's really something. One phone call, 22 grand profit, and it'll make my wife happy, which is a load off my mind, because when she's unhappy, I'm unhappy. Thank you. This was really good. You made my day. Even my wife will like you. Good. Well, keep me on your list, OK? Will do. Take care. Eighteen five. I'm wow. taking these boots, baby. Wow. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. There's no way your guy beat that. Well, I have faith. Open it up. Come on. Right. You ready? You Let's ready? go. Open, right. open your envelope. Eighteen thousand five hundred dollars. That's a big bid. I've got my fingers and toes crossed here. <laughs> I can tell by the look on her face, I got this. I got this. Thank you, Tori. Thank you. 20,000. <laughs> they are mine. You didn't lose. You didn't lose. Okay. No, no, no. We split it 50 50 like we, we agreed. We she won fair and square. Even though that hurts, I'm still four grand up. Not bad for a day's work. So, who is this guy? I would never, never give you that information. But I'll tell you what I will give you. I'll buy you dinner. Fair enough. There you go. That's a deal. Lost 10,000 on the photo, made 4,000 on the boots. Some days you gotta roll with the punches. In the end, I'm happy. To soften up the light of my life, I've flown her down to Florida, treated her to a five-star dinner, and taken her out for a moonlight ocean stroll. Well, honey, it's been a long day, but I'm home. What woman could resist? Prime filet of beef, the George Clooney of space dealing, and the delicate music of the tide gently going out, pulled by the Earth's four and a half billion year old natural satellite, the silvery moon. She is putty in 